Greetings. Today we're going to talk about gases. And gases are very important to us because they are all around us. Well, for one thing, we breathe in air. Air is a mixture of gases, such as nitrogen in the highest percentage, about 78%, and about 21% oxygen. And the rest, the, one, the remaining 1%, it's a mixture of several other gases. So gases are extremely important to us in our atmosphere because we are surrounded by them. So basically, what do we want to get out of this podcast? Well, we want to explain, we want you to be able to explain and uh, pressure and atmospheric pressure after you finish this podcast and to be able to talk about the properties of volume, pressure, temperature, and molecules. All right, so one of the most important characteristics of gases is that gases are compressible, meaning I can squeeze a gas, picture a balloon. I can squeeze that gas in that balloon. But other substances may not be as compressible. For example, solids are not very, very compressible. Most of the time, if you compress a, a, a substance such as a solid, you might break it, or it may be uh, something that doesn't compress at all because the particles are so very tightly packed. Here's the liquid where the particles, there's a little bit of room for a little bit of compression, but not a whole lot. But if you notice here, there are, there's a lot of space between the particles of gases, so therefore you could easily take that gas and compress it down. Actually, we could compress it so much that it becomes a liquid and then ultimately it becomes a solid. All right, so moving right along, we have uh, talked about solids, liquids, and gases, and how gases are the most compressible, and they're very, very compressible, actually. All right, so let's talk a little bit about pressure. What do we mean by this? Uh, if you, they're compressible, they exert pressure. And what is pressure? Pressure is defined as the force acting on an object divided by the area upon which that force is exerted. So in other words, how do particles exert pressure? When you have a particle here, and they're moving around very fast, because gases have a tendency to move quite fast, uh, see, that way, they bump against the walls of the container, and they may even bump against each other. But the pressure that they exert on those, the wall of the container, that's what we're referring to as pressure. So it's pressure per unit area. So we can talk about, for example, the atmosphere exerting pressure on us. The, all the air around us exerts pressure on us. And we can say that 14.7 pounds of pressure on a square inch of our skin, our bodies. So that's quite a bit of pressure, but we're pretty uh, used to it. So it doesn't really bother us. All right, so let's, now that we've, uh, Got that lead, we're going to talk about atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is caused by the weight of the atmosphere on top of us, like I was saying. So there, uh, picture this, uh, if I'm standing here, there's a column of air on top of me exerting pressure on me. So uh, I want to mention to you uh, the following. If I have uh, this little guy, I'm going to have a little guy on this mountaintop and standing here. And I have this other little guy on this uh, flatland right here next to the bay shore at sea level. We are, uh, there's going to be at the top of the atmosphere right here. So if you can think about this as the column of air pushing down on this guy, and then there's a column of air pushing down on this guy, notice that this is a much shorter column. So there's less pressure on this guy up here. So when you move up, go up a mountain, there's less pressure on top of you because the column of uh, air is a lot shorter. So if you think of, it, think of it that way, you will remember that pressure on top of mountain is less than at sea level. All right, so here's the representation of the same thing. Well, we can measure pressure in many units, and we're going to be working with those units a little later on. But right now, let's just say we're doing, dealing in kilopascals, which is 101.3 kilopascals at sea level. So at sea level, this is what we have here, this much pressure, which would be equivalent to one atmosphere. As you go down into the water or below the sea level, that pressure increases. But as you move up, the pressure 
decreases. Notice it goes from 101 kilopascals to 31 kilopascals to zero. Zero would be in the upper, upper part of the atmosphere or above that, the top layer of the atmosphere, where there's no air. So there's no pressure up here. All right, so what are the variables that we have to deal with, with gases? Pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. So let's talk about pressure. Pressure can be measured in atmospheres, ATMs, and they can be measured in millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury. So we can measure pressure also in uh, kilopascals, like we were talking about, APAs, as equal to kilo. And this is millimeters of a column of mercury and atmospheres. One atmosphere is the standard. Remember STP, standard temperature uh, and pressure? So standard pressure is one atmosphere, which is equivalent to 760 millimeters. You don't have to worry about that. Next podcast, we will be talking about that. So volume, we're going to be measuring in liters or in millimeters. And temperature, we measure in Celsius in the lab. However, we have to change that to Kelvins, so we never end up with a negative uh, temperature. So we want to convert from Celsius to Kelvins, to say the Celsius temperature plus 273 equals the Kelvin temperature. So that's the way to convert. And we'll be doing a lot of those conversions. And then moles, of course, we know that one mole is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So if I have two moles, I have two times that number uh, of particles, or three moles, three times that number of particles, or 5.7 moles, 5.7 times that number of particles. All right, so we're going to make an assumption, and we're going to hold to that assumption that gas particles are not affected by attractive forces, so that they do not attract. We are going to assume that, and um, it's, a, it's a correct assumption for our purposes. All right, so how can pressure be increased? Well, if I increase the number of particles, I can increase the pressure. I can put more particles inside something and thus increasing the pressure. I can also, how do gases move? They move from a place of high pressure to a lower pressure. And let, let me illustrate that with this video clip. Hey, I'm getting ready to go on my Sunday morning bike ride, but I find that my tire is kind of low, so I have to use my chemistry and physics, I guess, uh, by pumping my tire with air. As I push down on this lever, the, the amount of uh, volume inside decreases and I force the air out of this nozzle into my tire. Once I get more air inside my tire, it will no longer be flat as it is, and I will be able to increase the collisions inside that tire, the collision of the particles, thus increasing the pressure. So here we go. All right, so let's talk about, now that you've watched that video clip, there's another aspect that I want you to see. I want you to see how aerosol cans work. And aerosol cans basically are pressurized. They have a greater pressure inside than outside. And when you push the nozzle, what happens is that 
the you, you're opening up the, the valve so that some of the product that's inside can get out. And why does it get out? Because there's greater pressure here than the atmospheric pressure around you. So that becomes uh, pretty important. Now, there's one thing that you need to remember about these kinds of pressurized cans. You cannot heat them. And if you notice on the label, it'll say, do not incinerate. That means don't throw in an open fire. Don't burn. Because, and don't put it in a hot place either. Because what's going to happen, if you put a, say you put a can of uh, pressurized gas in a car, this is what happens. So beware. What happens with that is that the gas inside with the heat expands. And when it expands, it exerts enough pressure to bust the can. And this was an actual, uh, it's an actual picture of a car uh, in, uh, in the area, in the Tampa Bay area, uh, several years ago that uh, the rear mirror exploded like this and just everything broke. And they went to investigate and it turns out that there was a pressurized can inside the vehicle. And that's what caused it. And we're going to learn a little bit more about that in a future podcast and the laws that govern it. Okay, have a great day.